Hello everyone, my name is Zufar Bigbov and I'm um, developing a Rosera project which contains online um, gallery and academy and also a live uh, on, um, Rosera studio which is here in Connecticut in town of Watertown. Anyway, um, what we're going to do today, today I'm going to show you uh, part one of a two hour video um, and that will be part one for about an hour which is going at the regular pace so it will be slow and for some uh, of you it can be a slow pace for other uh, people it could be maybe quick anyway you can uh, change speed under this video and listen to 1.5 or maybe twice faster if you, I think you go 1.5 a pitch of my voice still will, will be preserved but it will go much more intense Whatever you prefer, um, adjust your lifestyle, uh, give me more feedback down. And in, in a break between, um, uh, like for about half an hour from now, uh, you'll be watching video and then it'll be a little break, which is essential for painting. I constantly say about that. And I will go through uh, questions which you asked during the webinar. I just will try to explain them or answer them in more concise um, manner. Uh, these events are recorded without super editing, but right in the beginning, it has sharp, great quality. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, you can put like if you didn't under this video, if you didn't do that. So uh, yet, if you are subscribed to my channel, that will be also a great uh, thing to do. Share it with your friends. And also, uh, if you want to say thank you, like a uh, different way, uh, supporting this channel, and me creating uh, these videos which are available for free there is an extra link as well so let's start now okay here we go we're starting now and we're starting not on white canvas which is toned already so we're not trying to remove all white canvas we'll be trying to remove um, yellow canvas where it's not appropriate right and place which where it's not much appropriate is the sky area definitely uh, this like almost rectangular or prism um, in between trees and um, and of course here we have a lot of warm colors warm colors here darker blues and again a warm colors a lot of them and I consider greens uh, as warm colors as well so again since we're not working on white canvas that's one thing and second because of water is um, something which will need uh, multiple approaches to cover it uh, blues and browns they mix easily so I will start with the water area and it looks like I'm starting almost like with the darkest darks every painting uh, goes a different way and I'll be going and painting with my uh, Bristol brushes so what and everything what I'm doing uh, you will see I don't have any small brushes because already all lines have been placed here. Under painting for water will be all uh, reddish and brownish uh, because I cannot work with blues at the beginning and even physically that reflection sits on top of the uh, bottom. So we'll go by layers here definitely. So to, will I mix? I think burnt sienna will work pretty well here. And I could go with my medium, but right here, even uh, gel will be good. And uh, I will create a couple of um, variation of my brown. Don't worry, all that area uh, under the thicker paint application will be uh, brownish as well and reddish. So we're just giving some sort of a value for that area. At the same time, of course, we're uh, kind of destroying our drawing so what can we fight that maybe we can just uh, under some places put uh, more of a purple color so where the ripples are happening and um, so it for us that's the way we can preserve our colors it seems to be very dark right now usually with this uh, first layer we go slightly a warmer and a darker but not always you know each painting needs a different approach and sequence of course layer first layer still stays first but uh, 
there is some flexibility. So if I sp say that I'm starting with usually with the lights, that's usually on white canvas and specifically uh, this painting will make our work much easier if it's not a uh, white canvas. So uh, here I think I can uh, go thinner with my burnt umber. I mean with a uh, burnt sienna and adding small amount of burnt umber as well. Again, I can get a value here based on my uh, just a layer thickness. So going with a darker but transparent paint can work as with watercolors, just thinner paint application. And then later with the second layer, we're not going to do, uh, we won't be able to do that. So you can see how uh, not even distribution here. Right, and um, I don't think it's too much of a kind of reddish brown there. I will go with a burnt umber very thinly and also adding plenty of medium to, to let it dry, help it dry faster. You see here, I just wish to show you I had a, a more expensive kind of higher load, pigmental load um, oil pastel applied and you see how much pigment started smearing. So that is why <laughs> for these drawing transfer cheaper oil pastels work better. All right, uh, I don't want to go to many details. I just will uh, redefine ripple area. I'm going to have them kind of like more as a not solid shape, definitely it has texture, but more horizontal. You see here, not only uh, brown, not even like a yellow, but it also has some greens there and greens is coming from yellow, interacting with blues. So let's do it this way. I don't scare it, it looks uh, fine. And looks very warm on this uh, video. More intense than I have on my um, canvas. So uh, let me apply now this dark area. So right now this very it looks very dark because there is nothing dark around. Uh, for blues I'll take a different brush. It doesn't matter what size, smaller. This is probably the smallest I have but that's absolutely fine. When we're outside, we're not trying to um, be very accurate with shapes unless this is your competition piece. So when you're going to do study, more important you get their colors. All right. And here, blue kind of disappears. I'm not going to make it brown. I'd rather make turn it towards a purple. And even though there is some grass here, it's not time to really care about that, those uh, single straws. So right now, you could uh, notice that this brown looks lighter. It still looks reddish. There is nothing happened with its chromatic the color uh, qualities, but overall uh, it's changed. So now you can really, if you want to correct that, you can uh, see color quality better and value-wise it looks lighter. Looks like here very a soft edge. Again, maybe not uh, most important time, not very right time to do all edges. Uh, let me work here. It really uh, looks uh, very dark on our reference, but since it's a cast shadow on grass and grass here is uh, 
turn towards the sky in shadow it will be kind of cooler green and I will take of course not the uh, cobalt green plane I will use olive green to give it value and then we'll cool it down using cobalts and what to do with areas like this uh, that's actually a pre like mixed it's really hard to say uh, what color is that because of there is some uh, texture here I would go uh, with something like a purple because some straws and most of them actually when they're dry in shadow on shadow side they turn purple I'm pretty much uh, going with paints without any titanium white or any other pure opaque paints I didn't even get to my cadmiums so this will be our over time you create your own brush work design and um, this is for me like Chinese letters hieroglyphs so you find your own way of placing them nicely and beautifully same thing with drawing as well you could uh, decide how to do this uh, in your sketch when you work on paper but quite often when you're outside you won't, don't want to spend much time with paper you can always work on it once you start working on a bigger piece but I'm trying to kind of separate some areas and zones kind of like a even now still drawing with my brush and creating not even not solid but uh, at the same time um, in value close uh, but in color slightly different areas and again uh, straws in between them some grass uh, green grass have seen in between and uh, what you can do with a thin and light paint application paint application uh, you kind of like uh, create that uh, maze also we're watching bigger shapes and what I'm going to do with this grass let's say uh, here we have green and we have here uh, again uh, light straws uh, green is strong pigment and light straws are opaque uh, colors so both of them are pretty strong and shall I go with green or gray since I have already toned canvas I think I'll go with a light green but I will not paint entire uh, this no, entire this area just will create some sort of design and um, you can uh, right now you see those uh, reddish leaves stuck in between straws uh, we are not painting them but kind of we can uh, put some notes that we're going to do them soon not soon but uh, during this painting process uh, a little too dark of course you can do that with burnt sienna as well it's just quite reddish almost orange all right so um at times you need to uh, stop and squint and see what's going on and let's say with this leftover which we don't have much on our uh, reference image what you're going to do i still would go with maybe some complex green which uh, gray which i create using um, cadmium orange and ultramarine blue and um, i will cover it then if I want a lighter straws to be painted on top of it this thin paint will settle pretty quickly I'll be able to do so with the softer brushes so it looks like we need to put there some blue but it's not time yet um, at the same time you see there is some dry brush uh, effects happened this area is uh, like solidly covered 
and uh, when you use kind of like a barely touching surface with a dry brush what happens you create nice texture but it's really not helpful in painting process this is like would be nice as a almost a graphical presentation I talked about that many times just want to point again don't get caught with this cool effect of dry uh, brush in your uh, under painting on upper layers if you want to work as uh, Nicolai fashion that's absolutely fine uh, but your first layer should be uh, in values broken into relatively uh, large or just uh, large uh, shapes am I working on texture yes I think I'm talking and then my brain <laughs> start uh, thinking and wondering somewhere so we have here a couple of lines of um, green but overall that straw which grows on that little island is light enough so here under painting works pretty nicely um, as a base a value and even color for those shapes so um, before we evaluate is everything great here or not or need correction I will have to move further I'll grab my uh, brush which I started with and I will work on um, that solid mass of woods in the distance what colors will I use again it's grayish and there is um, obviously you can see there's some yellow and greens I'll go with a light purplish gray and now since it's a distant area I may want to add small amounts of opaque paint as titanium white it will make my purple um, I think I still had some brown on my brush and you should have fewer brushes I'll take another one and um, now mixing it together on um, palette it doesn't look that dark but here it looks it is that it is and um, working with the two colors not two colors but two variation of my mix let's put it this way it's nice if you have your sketch because sketch will be not touched but what we did on our canvas is getting is disappearing because we're applying paint so now this is almost like uh, blends with these branches and these branches I think closer we have more of a red in them so very tiny amount of uh, with um, alizarin will help me if needed I still will add small amount of titanium white it's not going to slow down painting uh, much because I'm still using pretty good amount of my gel which delicate gel which is supposed to speed up drying time also you know it's uh, it's almost like a cloud so you but you need to find it's rougher than a cloud so you can find a specific direction and some brush strokes will be wider with a thicker paint application and still since this is not our sky behind yet so you need to think that this dry fetch and style paint application is not much uh, appropriate to consider as a final uh, look but we can um, encourage ourselves put some notes like mentally that this is happening interesting if I was painting with a just dry brush like graphical works could be different painting but it's some skill which we you may possibly uh, be able to 
to use in the future. Again, you see, I put too many brush strokes because I overall like all this game. So now we kind of separated the area where the sky is supposed to be from uh, everything else. And, um, and sky, I cannot say that it's very light here. I photograph quite often, camera catch that blue and makes it deeper. So I will intentionally paint, when, while I paint from my reference, will make it lighter. And not only um, adding their white, but adding white with some uh, maybe small amount of orange and small amount of uh, yellows to make it vibrating blue. We'll get there soon. And uh, so now this grass and slope here is the uh, next area which I'm going to cover. I'm not really paying much attention to uh, tree stems. They are very thin in this case and they don't think they deserve any uh, specific attention uh, right now. Even though uh, when it's slightly bigger you start thinking, oh well maybe I should do uh, something like this right now. And that will not be a mistake. Uh, either way, it, it possesses some uh, convenience, some uh, nice uh, features and, and, and some or becomes a obstacle, a uh, slight obstacle. Um, so there is no perfect way of working on it. It's possible to make things uh, very bad uh, on every aspect. I'm going to talk about these two options. Again, we can paint them now, we can paint them late, later. They are thin, they are linear can be applied uh, later, especially we don't really worry about, uh, about them during our first layer. We can easily remove it, scrape it off. So, um, you know, this area has its color. And if we look at the, uh, our reference image, it, there is some pink color and orange color here. And even though it's not bordering with any blues, uh, to understand exactly how cool or how warm I need to take them. I think application of uh, color and sky to the sky and uh, value wise yeah, it will get slightly. I think it will be pretty much the same. It looks on photograph darker but I will I promise to take it lighter. So it will be pretty close to what we have right now. So for sky I will take a separate brush and it doesn't have to be big, it could be, I mean small, it could be as big as this one. And also I'm looking at my palette, is it time to um, clean it? Maybe, uh, why not? So I'll use a scraper. And uh, it depends what kind of scraper you have and what kind of glass. So this glass is pretty fragile. I'm using not real glass because of, for just because of video uh, recording. I don't want any glare. Definitely here, sky will be uh, that area where we want white because of it's not even close um, color-wise uh, to what we need there, and so hence I'll need more opaque paint and I'll start covering it. Yeah, I think if look if I look at the. A reference. I think that's pretty nice and close. Again, if you uh, new separate brush is a must and maybe you'll need to change even twice because once you start touching those browns it gets between the hair um, of the brush and then it's easy, very easy to lose uh, freshness and crispness of blue paint. Shall I uh, work a lot in between? I think I could wait until, uh, unless I want to, um, I have pretty big windows there. So I'll touch it somewhere, but that will be not the final um, work through that lace. 
of branches. I told you that I'm going to use some uh, small amount of cadmium, even orange, and I'm going with a clean one. I'm not really much mixing it. So I'm kind of going with the white and cadmium orange and small amount of cadmium lemon, which is intense. Tiny, tiny. Of course, you can use palette knife and get it just like a little bit of the paint and mix it. Even I th think this value wise is dark, dark enough. So we have here some uh, clouds and usually closer to the bottom the sky turns warmer more purplish and lighter and then gets I get purple and darker when it's very close to horizon because of the dust uh, which we have in the air so I'm pretty happy with the color presentation and we got coolness in our painting I do not consider that area because that's too intense at this moment and I can see it now more once more and more of a canvas uh, surface get covered with paint getting values down and also between trees quite often we like going with ultramarine blue mixes because uh, it's closer to purples okay looks like I'm making this brush not as clean as it used to be but that's fine I think once if I need to go here over the sky again I'll be going during my second layer with a softer brush and I'll get it clean so um, with the first layer with a thicker hair in my brush I'm creating that texture of branches in its depth you probably can see that purple right in between branches so um, and sometimes it just goes almost like you could see it blue enough and I think maybe some of them so you try to recreate uh, that effect once you see it and uh, and if you don't see it while you're standing there try to squint you may start seeing that and uh, we're using often peripheral re vision because what draws uh, all attention here I think all this area kind of closer to the center and reflection in the water so kind of like all this area So now if I squint and I look at my reference and I look at my painting and then back to reference and back to my painting, I see that overall grass looks shining and uh, I like shape of it even though we don't care much. I like this foreground actually. It's the same way, it looks pretty abstract as on reference. Background maybe a little too warm a little bit too much of a red and here too much of a red it could be bleached and kind of discolored that's easy I think the uh, that all that area looks good as well uh, sky I was willing to make it lighter and all this uh, bare trees area is fine there is some mass like in this area which I did not do yet but I will apply so I see a uh, mainly problem here this is turned to uh, supposed to be turned more towards brownish and greenish and this area seems to be a little too dark so uh, i'm not a big fan of scraping but sometimes even like finger painting can be helpful because when you expose too much texture it's i think too early i'm kind of painting just the bottom of the river here and I want to get a right value for it when I looked at the uh, screen what you see I think uh, you see darker more contrast bottom that's the thing as the cameras do 
uh, in my original, in my painting, which I have here, it doesn't seem to be that dark. But I'll try to create an image which is, uh, makes you see exactly what I want to show in the painting process. So, um, again, the bottom of the river, it's a multi, multi uh, level, multi kind of a layer uh, approach. It's not just two layers, probably like four layers. I'm going to work on it and still have to apply uh, my paint thinly. So uh, let me get more of a greenish and let's take some cadmium orange and put some this green. And let's see how good in value is that. That's, uh, that's actually getting better. And then in addition to that, something like yellow ochre or sienna could make can make some improvement. I'm going again with something like which is more opaque but uh, my paint application is uh, quite delicate and thin. If you want to right from here from now start working with again a softer synthetics that's going to be absolutely fine. So that's better. That's definitely better. Still working with a good amount of medium. And now this dark area doesn't look that crazily dark. Some shallow sides, even though it's fall and there is no much green on the bottom. But there is still some remnants in the soil. Must be like that. I want this whole uh, area to get dry enough so before I start uh, painting any reflections on it. It's nice if you know and feel how to work with a smaller number of brush strokes. So practicing this skill is never a bad idea. I was also trying to make this area a little bit shorter. It still looks pretty long and what I got there I think at this point we need to do uh, some break and uh, to let our eyes rest and our painting to also to rest. Okay, let me answer uh, questions which were during the live chat. And um, I'm glad to see you all. Thank you for all nice greetings and uh, pleasant words. Um, and thank you for being back uh, to my channel. We had over 80 uh, people at the same time watching it that Thursday night. And then uh, in like four days, we did already 1600s, over 1600s uh, views. Thank you. Again, subscribe, like this video, uh, donate if you can or just uh, follow and let's get this world better. 
creating art and painting, and of course, in addition to what we are also doing in our lives as raising children, being good friends, spouses, and uh, you know, working professional maybe in different fields as well as in medicine, engineering, teaching, um, anything which um, makes this world better. Also, in your questions and in your comments, I've seen there is a there was uh, Vlad Duchev, who is a friend of mine, and he was excellent assistant uh, to my workshops in Virginia. And he travels now. He's uh, doing pretty well, very well in plein air competition. Congratulations, Vlad, with your uh, grand prize at plein air Texas. It was pleasant, and uh, you told me already that uh, you feel some impact from uh, learning from me as well and painting together and talking and you learn i know a lot from other resources uh, good job and again i'm very happy for you uh, regarding other questions uh, how to use uh, reference images it's acdc app and link was in below the video i'll post it here as well please watch it and then find on youtube uh, its use maybe i'll take a a little video in the future how I use it but generally I'm using format of a raw plus JPEG it takes a lot of space though and uh, I'm using uh, also focus manual uh, setting so I can make it blurry uh, I'll take a regular picture then I make it more blurry and then more blurry and very blurry uh, to the grade when I still can see uh, objects big shapes and specifically colors um, one hour or two hour videos i'll go for now with one hour and then uh, at a regular speed and then in the future i'm going to uh, one hour squeezing there two hours uh, so it can be good introduction it will be good for those who are watching it uh, want to watch it quickly because of their personalities or because they learned and know a lot of things already for those who are beginners i highly recommend to um, go to rosero.com slash academy and a look at the classes which uh, i am working on definitely will be there soon uh, foundational drawing class foundational uh, basic class for beginners of oil painting and of course a bunch of mpd master painting demos and thanks for those who took those classes last year that was a pleasure working on it and um, it was a pleasure feeling support from um, you so i can work and spend more uh, stu time in studio without questions from my wife so where the money are and <laughs> etc so uh, we live in the united states and everyone understand uh, that you need to pay your own bills and yes this studio painting travels all uh, sums up so we need to sell something i sell paintings but i don't like dictatorship from um, galleries if they try to do so i'd rather have high quality painting of my favorite subjects composition and scenes and um, and if gallery want to sell it that's great if they don't want to sell it i still have my fans and students who will support me as well so um, another question was regarding uh, mediums i mentioned that in a video along the way that for first layer I'm using Mix 5050 Gamsol and uh, Galkid uh, Light. So both of them are liquid. First of them is a solvent, so it evaporates totally. And second is a medium, it has fat in it. It's kind of modified oil. It's almost like a very, something between oil and varnish. I guess some sort of oxidation or polymerization happened already. That is why it speeds up settling of the painting getting stuck on uh, surface of the canvas and also lets upper layers to kind of uh, hold them so they don't, they don't flake off in the future and for a further uh, thicker paint application i use gel or i don't do anything uh, for drying i use sunlight uh, mainly and that provides a plenty of energy for chemical reactions on oil to work and turn from the uh, liquid form to a thicker uh, form and create that protective uh, very well and glossy uh, kind of uh, surface and later if i want to varnish i use also um, gam var why i'm saying also because all these projects are made from by gambling uh, american 
a company which is based in Oregon, very good quality, very good R uh, research and development uh, department, and they have their own uh, website. And if you Google, you'll find how uh, you work with their products. So that's my choice. Okay, let's see a uh, second half an hour uh, video of working on this uh, fantastic view. I love it. I hope you do too. So after this break, I look at my painting and my analysis comes and uh, I see new <laughs> horizons which I need to uh, start working on. So it kind of opens up my, my mind. Pretty much everything which I said at the end of the previous uh, block, so too much red in this area, but value-wise, sky is good. So let's go from top to the bottom, even though most attractive and most challenging part is, of course, the river, uh, its bed and its uh, also reflections, which, which we didn't paint yet. And there is also some ripples uh, on surface. So, uh, Skies are good. I'm not touching it uh, at this moment in the beginning. It really gives me a blue, nice color to compare with. Value of that block uh, looks pretty good. Maybe it's not just well uh, defined, but the shape of it is good enough and value is good. And I should say, uh, after we finish first layer, we are coming to correction of some uh, lines if they uh, need to be highlighted or disappeared and um, so that's what i'm trying to analyze if we're done uh, with <clears throat> kind of like a first layer so I'm correcting lines and still analyzing values if i need to do that uh, first so uh, shape of these trees especially like in blurry image they uh, look pretty nice so that's the original it's too much better even better yeah the best so we're still moving uh to this uh, i mean kind of the way as it looks here on our reference image so uh this is too much red but closer to the water there is a red that's probably mainly leaves of these oak or elm trees and uh so there we have less with some rocks and soil, whatever is there, it's too much red here. Same thing with the stem of the um, trees and bark of it, okay. This area looks good, maybe cooler green. We'll apply it and that's absolutely normal uh, for transformation. Shape-wise, it looks like a big, uh, maybe a rock at this time, but the green color and uh, softer edges will make it a look better. I think shadow here is too deep. It's a dark green. It looks almost black on screen, as I see. And this area, I would not really even touch it because of if I do these straws now, I may kind of pull too much uh, attention from the water area. And um, you can do this area, whatever uh, your, the whole design will be asking you. It's too flexible. So let's keep it as it's now. It's not distracting. It's sitting in values and colors, pretty accurate. So what will I do now? I still uh, will work on uh, this riverbed and before I apply um, reflections. I still feel that uh, this area needs to be smoother and some areas lighter. Let's see what's really happening here. There are some few uh, leaves which got stuck and looks like some straws. If you want to see the original photograph, it's like that. And it looks like uh, it's a sand and uh, like top of you know, this little ridge under the water, it shows up. But what I really like and I want to show is these blues which are much deeper than the sky. It's a reflection of it, which turns purple and brown and how to paint it without losing color and not to make it too bright or too intense. So that's for me, it's one of the top uh, tasks I want to accomplish. Now I'm working with a softer brushes and I will be working with a size four flat uh, Filbert will be fine as well and so uh, let's work on a water area.
So now we can go with more opaque paints if we feel that we need it. And uh, let's have some Galkit gel squeezed. And again, this uh, paint, which is raw sienna, uh, looks on screen so orangey, which is not. But it's strong pigment. It's a opaque pigment. So. I still, I'm, I'm still not ready to go with a thick paint application. So you see all colors I'm mixing here, some variety. And you need to find uh, your way of applying paint. Make sure you're not rubbing too much against the surface, not even because you can destroy <laughs> the paint surface, but also because of uh, this way you can go, if you rub too much, go too thin. And we don't really want our main layer to be too thin. So it's maybe too intense. And this area, sand here is very flat. I really like shape of it. So drawing wise, I don't see uh, any challenging areas where I need to correct, which I would standardly do. So I see everything seems to be pretty accurate shape wise, so I'm skipping that stage. So send your questions in uh, if you're watching it live. Once, if you're watching it recorded already, um, you still can ask questions in comments area. I just do not know when I have a chance to read and answer them. I cannot promise to do that in timely manner, but if you came to the live, uh, streaming definitely I uh, will make another break and I'll answer your questions so that looks nice and looks like paint some kind of settled and now this is what I like here I still not going with the light crazy uh, things this is still the bottom of the river so now I'll try to go in values um, like in this soft area will make it lighter as I see it. I'm not going to hit that area where I have a lot of blues. I think these browns are still stay wet enough. Um, and if I clean my brush well enough, I can go here and work slightly more on top without damaging. Again, if you need uh, to go on top, not only softer brush, but also direction of the brush, not going perpendicular, but rather laying it almost parallel to the surface. If you have paint, of course, on the side of your brush, then it will help you to drag it without damaging. I could stay more focused when I um, do not talk, just paint without talking, but at the same time, there are so many critical points I need to explain. So we're trying to do our best. I don't need to apply now uh, too much of 
medium only if I feel that it's too thick. So no dark shadows in the distance. don't see them on ref reference either except of that one which is here I'm not gonna uh, work I'm not gonna do it and even with blue now I start working on richer and more of diverse colors so I'm adding not only ultramarine blue mixes but also manganese or cerulean uh, blue imitation in my case all right so uh, it looks crazily intense blue there uh, again in my original here it's not that bad try to adjust in a video that blue color presentation so now I start feeling that I'm getting uh, ready kind of to move maybe right now and work on this reflection area During my plein air session, I wouldn't really pay much attention, but here, changing shape like to this, kind of removing this blue part, getting closer with a shallow part, with the sand closer, and then refining. I think it feels important also there is a definitely a softer edge seems to be here because overall distance kind of uh, and it's per getting peripheral and distance from the edge of this kind of cliff and the uh, edge of the shadow to the bottom of the river is longer So it should be soft edge and requires looks like a small amount of purple here. All right. So while I'm working with these blues and purple and indefinite colors, maybe I can uh, do a little softening of the edge here, adding shadow side. Despite photograph contrast, I still want this to be slightly lighter. All right. I think I'm pretty satisfied with all this corner now. Um, 
with the blue it seems to be so crazily blue for me just again it's not natural light i'm uh, doing recording in studio but this blue especially here need to be muted and made lighter so let's find the right color and most importantly value as well if you see there's some blue you don't mean that you need the whole taken with the flat brush strokes to eliminate that blue totally you can leave part of it just for me what I see on screen seems to be less natural but what I see on my canvas looks pretty close at least to what I see on reference image all right I think I'm close now to start doing those reflections you know uh this there are some openings okay on this reflection like one two three four and then it goes to those ripples and many many uh, kind of um, waves going across it's not that easy uh, i should say that i need to treat them as just simple shapes without going with that some areas which are darker in blue uh, somewhere less of a blue but it's uh, important to know that uh, this area will be a lighter in value if there is any reflection I don't see much reflection I think because of the water is not still but here I have some spots which are almost still water so I'm not getting any of these windows openings closed so let's go like this and I will try to build them as some sort of almost rectangles and it's down it's not getting just a darker blue it's getting a less blue because of the angle because of the optics okay this looks good also ripples go like this direction as the, their main body but they go uh, with up like perpendicular to direction of it and of course in this projection they kind of like go crisscross like this so the direction of the whole ripple body and then ripples themselves as small waves go across it so of course some would do that like this but um, just be just try it first if it works it's good if it but it may not it's but there is a chance that's not going to work i'm not going uh, with thin paint i'm not going with a thick paint it's just a very cautious approach this worked well I think this edge will correspond to this tree
and now we'll create like more as with lines this segment Looks like there's a cloud here and cloud should not be just a whiter it should have some different color it's going to be warmer and lighter so some orange or yellow ochre should be there so this uh, looks slightly better This takes time, but I think it's most ex most exciting part I'm learning during this session. Of course, I can take smaller brush. Training how to do it at home can really help me then outside to approach it fearlessly. <laughs> even trying too much copying it I just need to create a feeling of this effect and now it turns that some areas look purple Maybe that's actually uh, tops of the trees can reflect giving that feeling and in value it's darker of course than the cloud itself and also goes I see still some like in this area it's not just dark but it has some green in the color and something like olive green will be a good addition to that brown a little more intense And also, you see, there's like evergreen or something green is growing there. So adding to darker spots some green tinge. Of course, it's still not time for doing any stems, reflection in water. It's coming, it will come it's on its own time. Some cadmium green or actually cobalt green so it's not as again intense as viridian if you go with viridian to be more 
uh, using smaller amount of paint definitely and this area it has some green because of the green is on the bank but again it's lighter smoother and um, so let's mix something like this Again, not using much of a medium, only when I feel that my paint is too thick and looks like my brush gets stuck. But otherwise, go with a relatively thick paint. But also consider that there is no much more paint will be applied later on top of it. Still lighter but not with a pure white elytra and adding some color in it. So now it looks closer to what I see in my reference. So blue and yellow, so we're a little bit of greenish uh, parts. Looks muddy, but it's in right place. And that muddy brings life into the view. You need really green of course you add to your any green cadmium lemon and that becomes electric i'm not encouraging you to use a lot of it but sometimes you need to put here and there some highlights softly but just to add color when it's too bright of course you can make it uh, less intense When you apply your paint on top of wet paint layer on palette, your pile looks bright. You add it there. It's not anymore that bright and you add more and more and more, adding more and more mud. But with experience, you will know exactly. Maybe right from the beginning, you need to put more of it. And you're afraid when you don't have much experience or I'm not even saying experience as an artist. Sometimes experience of painting seen like this. Like for me, I don't paint this often, uh, specific, but definitely after uh, doing this webinar, I'll be more comfortable coming there and we can take a teach a workshop. And I definitely, uh, since I discovered this place, I definitely will go and uh, paint this in different seasons uh, to those who are ready, who wants to go. So uh, grace and muddy colors come in different <laughs> flavors as well and different combinations. But you know, some grays look great next to, let's say blues or next to browns. Because of these grays could be reddish, could be greenish, could be bluish, could be many, many different types. All right, it's time to make a little um, break, maybe like for one minute. Uh, and I'll answer your other uh, block of questions. So we're done uh, with uh, two half an hour sessions and makes over an hour of video plus my talking. 
and we did pretty well. If you look at our uh, painting at this stage, uh, water already looks great. It doesn't have any like sparkles on it, but color-wise and value-wise, it looks great. There is more work on grass needed and definitely on those woods, and then to balance things together and maybe to remove excess of details, that will be all in second uh, part in part two. Please stay tuned, uh, find the next uh, video. I'll try to put the link under this video, how to jump to video part two, and we'll see you. We'll see you soon.